You like my new hat? I got a mosquito fishing hat. This thing's pretty nice, comfortable, free from bugs. You can fish and not get eaten alive by mosquitoes or flies or chiggers. Any nasty little creatures that we don't want buzzing all around our face. So, where did I get my new hat from? There's a new company called Ayamaya. Uh, and they reached out to me and asked me to test out some gear for them. And uh, they sent me a really cool bug net. And they sent me this really nice mosquito hat. So, very comfortable, super lightweight. <clears throat> the mosquito meshing on here does have a pull string so you can kind of tighten it up so you're free from bugs no bugs are gonna climb up underneath so pretty cool uh, hat and then they also sent me another hat which is pretty nice uh, again super lightweight it's made of a poly like partially polyester material um, these do unsnap and and come down a little drawstring to keep it on you uh, super super lightweight foldable compact for all you backpackers uh, but what I'm here to talk about mainly is their bug net that they sent me so last night as you guys know I changed locations and tore everything down had to reset everything back up so I figured what a better time than to set up the Ayamaya bug net and test it out kind of put it through the ringer and see how it held up um, I am going to be testing this out periodically and uh, I'll give you guys updates on uh, construction of it how it's holding up uh, in the elements that I'm in uh, but it's so far it's pretty nice now this bug net is meant for an 11 foot hammock I do currently own a 9 foot hammock so um, it is pretty big obviously on a 9 foot hammock I do have some extra some extra pull on it <coughs> which is pretty nice now uh, one thing that I noticed right away that I really liked that's different from the current bug net that I own is that you have these little clips that just hang on to your ridge line so when you're setting up your ridge line and you want fast installation of a bug net these little clips just hanging these things on there is super fast so as you see on a lot of bug nets it'll have loops that you have to run your ridge lines through that takes time and while you're doing that the bug nets laying on the ground this is super easy you can hold everything up in the air and clip it on as you go so really nice with the just the little hangy clips to just hang this thing on there. It's pretty nice. Um, <coughs> you got a no seam style meshing <coughs> around your front door zipper. You've got some reinforced fabric. Um, we're gonna test it out and see if it is a bit waterproof. Two zipper pulls that you get. I got my other one down here. Pretty nice, easy to zip up and down. Um, not getting any snags. Uh, you notice a lot of times in things that have zippers where the material's kind of getting caught in the zipper. Um, so far, I've unzipped this thing probably a dozen times. I've not gotten anything snagged up. So it's actually super, super nice. Um, it's pretty long <coughs> so it's fully enclosing my entire hammock plus the gear sling that I have you know the gear sling is important to me um, now one thing I've been running into with my current bug net um, is that when I have the gear sling set up or I've got different cordage coming out of the ends uh, where I have you know my gathered end of the, the hammock um, it's pulling which the drawstring is opening up so when I set this up I was pretty concerned about that as well because that's important because that's where those little bugs are coming in 
uh, at that gathered end because there's little openings from everything kind of stretching out. Now one thing I noticed and really liked with the Ayamaya bug net is that their drawstring is really super tight. Now <clears throat> you've got this material at the end here and again I'm going to test it out to see uh, if there's any waterproof capabilities of this but as you see this is extremely tight so the odds and chances of bugs crawling in the end here are going to be very very small <coughs> so uh, this is held up normally also too once I sit in the hammock and kind of putting that pressure uh, it's also loosening up my drawstring I've been in and out of this hammock several times already moving around tossing and turning kind of while I'm in there um, and this cinched end here with this drawstring uh, has not come undone. So it stayed tight throughout the entire night, which is super, super important. You've got that on both ends. Um, it does come with its own stuff sack. So it all fits inside of its own stuff sack. You do have your little clips at the end which is pretty nice most bug nets come with you know a, a stuff sack and uh, it's just the drawstring that you're hanging it from this you've got a bit more durable of a material with the the clip so you can clip it onto your backpack clip it onto uh, your waist you know whatever any uh, any way that you need to transport and carry it um, so a bit more durable on the carrying capacity so I really like that now the other thing I noticed um, and I did set up in the night so I didn't see this originally uh, but when I got in the hammock I had noticed that there was kind of this uh, this other thing that was attached to the bug net and kind of feeling it from the inside I thought maybe this might be a pullout so I'm like okay well it's dark it's nighttime, I can't really see. I don't really want to play with this right now. Uh, so now that it's daytime and I can see everything, see what's going on, uh, what I noticed is that on one end, I do have a little loop and this is a pull out. So I can pull the bug net out so that it's not creating this coffin effect and closing in on me and kind of you know drooping down on top of me um, I can pull this out and you do have it on both both sides it's only on one end of the the hammock so meant for your sleep your head sleeping end um, but it pulls out and you can stake that down so that you've got more room inside of the bug net so it's not creating that coffin effect and everything just kind of drooping and laying on top of you uh, so with that you do get two stakes you get some guy lines and some cordage that comes with that uh, and then you do get some other string uh, which I'm assuming is to create a ridge line inside of the bug net now obviously I already have a ridge line created from my other bug net and with the dark time setup I just use that uh, but you do have cordage to create a ridge line going across um, so you can hang your stuff from so if you're looking to get a hammock and put a bug net up while you're chilling in the backyard or you want to take take it down to the beach and just kind of hang out for the day uh, if you find a nice little wooded spot uh, and you want to be free from little pesky flying bugs spiders earwigs uh, mosquitoes all of that type of stuff um, it's a quality bug net so, um, it is like 4 a.m. and I'm sure you guys are wondering why my background looks totally different and there's no hammock or a bug net or a tarp in the background. Well, I'm in a van. Um, so, let me tell you how I got here. Uh, so, as you guys know, um, I bought the whoopee slings from Dutch wear gear uh, and basically the whoopee sling is a suspension system uh, that gives me a better lay inside of the hammock 
Um, also, the ability to hang from trees that are further apart. Now, uh, I'm not going to go into super crazy detail and explain a whoopee sling for those of you that have you know, no idea what it is. But basically, a whoopee sling's configuration is like a Chinese finger trap. Remember them stupid little things we used to stick our fingers in and we couldn't get it out? So, basically, um, there is a rope that goes inside of another rope kind of see that right and then coming out from the other end would be like a loop system so you guys can kind of see how this loop goes inside of itself okay now when I hang this on the tree I take this little loop and I run my cordage through it and then it cinches down into you know a little knot now the other end uh, would be all of this cordage that I can pull um, that I can pull on itself or pull it this way to adjust the lay of the hammock and and all of that well for some reason um, so when I got these uh, there is a little a little bead at the end um, of the loop that comes out of this end uh, to prevent that loop from sucking up into this crazy little finger trap. Uh, for some reason, on both of my whoopee slings, the beads have fallen off. Um, I have no idea how that happened, uh, but it did. I didn't even recognize that it did happen. Um, and last night, this is what I think happened as far as how this has now become a gear fail. Not that there's anything wrong with the Whoopi Slings, not that there's anything wrong with Dutchwear Gear. Uh, it's a great company. This is actually a great product. Um, but because I changed locations in such a hurry last night, because of how cold it was, how windy it was, um, I literally just folded everything up in a giant ball, threw it in the back of the little kid carrier that I have, made it to the other location, which I'm calling Secret Garden, and... Uh, I was trying to set everything up in the dark because my headlamp had died, the battery on it died. Um, I was trying to use my flashlight on my phone, it was an absolute nightmare. So a lot of what I was doing, even though I had some light, a lot of what I was doing was in the dark and by feel. Um, I've been out here 40 days, 41 days. Um, so I pretty much have everything down to a science of what I'm doing. Little tweaks here and there depending on trees and location. Um, but I was really just feeling everything. Now, the trees that I was set up on, I did not need the whoopee slings. So I just used the straps, um, the Grand Drunk straps that I have. So the whoopee slings were useless to me yesterday and basically dangling. Now trying to set up in the dark, I can't see where I'm going very well. And uh, this is what I think happened. So multiple times my whoopee sling from dangling um, I was tripping over, it was getting caught in my shoe sandals, um, and, you know, I'm trying to kick my foot loose, I'm pulling on it, and I think what I did is it got caught on my foot, and I pulled this string too far, because out of this end, I normally have a loop, and because that little bead broke off, there was nothing there preventing that loop from going inside of this is called a, a berry uh, so yeah so my loop is now stuck inside of there so I have been actually spending the last eight hours now mind you it's like 4 4 30 in the morning I've been spending eight hours trying to get inside of this shoving things down this end coat hangers all kinds of stuff uh, weird random tools and parts and pieces just trying to get into this mesh am steel um, now I think I found where the loop is and the cordage this piece where it's you know I think I found what this piece is the problem is that I need to stick it through 
this non-existent hole. This is legit like having a baby come out of your butthole. That's how tight this thing is. It's ridiculous. But this, it's like within this area. Eight hours trying to do this and I've still not fixed it. Um, this is such a problem and such a crucial thing right now because the I can only now right now because I don't have access to this I can only set up on trees that are closer together the problem is that those trees that are closer together because of where I've been kind of hiding out those trees are all down by the lake okay now it is 52 degrees here all right down by the lake it's gonna be a lot colder um, you know you're anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees colder uh, depending on kind of what else is happening down by the lake. If there's a lot of wind, what the direction of the wind, you know, a lot of that stuff. Um, and because I left last night because of how cold I was, there's no way that I'm going back there tonight uh, and freezing because I can get seriously, seriously uh, ill. I can get hypothermia down there. Like, there's a lot that can go wrong. Um, I'm not, I'm still not wearing the right stuff, you know, we're, like we're talking like fall weather right now in August, um, but like cold fall weather. So uh, I need trees that are further apart um, and I have a couple of locations, but I can't set up on those trees without my whoopee sling. Um, so it's probably going to take about a week to get one of these sent to me. Uh, so. What we did, um, one of my managers just ran me up to a store that's open 24 hours, and we got, sorry, you guys are looking at my butt, uh, so I got a bunch of, um, a bunch of stuff, so I got one of these seam rippers, um, I did get some sewing needles, which these are going to be super crucial anyway. This is something that, like, something I should have had. Um, I got these nail care sticks. It's going to be a little hard to see, but I got these little shorty nail care sticks. And then I got this dental set where, as you can see, I'll try to angle this right. There's this metal pick, and then there's one on this side as well. Um, because really, what I'm trying to do is latch onto that loop that's inside that berry to be able to pull it out. Um, so pretty clever, pretty creative idea by my by my boss um, to look for something like this. So, and then while we found this, we grabbed a few other items just in case some other options to kind of play um i did plan on doing this now i'm absolutely exhausted if you guys couldn't tell um so i think i'm gonna play with this tomorrow but i was you know in my location i was up there i was playing with this for about an hour and then it got dark out i was still playing with it and it got to a point where it's just super frustrating there's nothing i can do i'm standing there in the dark um and i ended up coming to the restaurant so, ended up working for a little bit, um, helping out one of the employees that I really, really like. I have a lot of fun with him at work. Um, he got pretty jammed up, and uh, so I ended up staying and helping him out. Uh, got a free meal out of it. Um, and yeah, and then just sat for hours playing with this uh, and to no avail. So, I need another green whoopee sling from Dutchware gear. So at some point I'm going to have to order this. Uh, so anyway, let's talk about my background. Uh, so because my option really is to go back down to the lake, set up on trees that are shorter together, um, both of my managers did not want me to do that. And uh, it was a little bit of a back and forth. Uh, it was a little sketch about doing taking this offer um, but I'm actually inside of one of the work vans so I've laid my tarp down I do have my sleeping bag and my blanket and 
uh, tonight I will be sleeping in one of the work vans. So, uh, it is still cold, obviously, um, but it is way warmer than I would be in the hammock. So, with my breathing, with my body heat, all of that, it'll warm up in here a bit. Um, I do have the key to the van. So if it does get super cold, um, I can turn the van on, turn the heat on, and, uh, and run that for a little bit just to kind of heat everything up. So uh, obviously laying on the floor of the van is gonna be a bit uncomfortable. It's probably not gonna be great on the back or the hips, um, but you gotta take the good with the bad at this point. So a little uncomfortable for some added warmth um, and some security, you know, so, yeah, I'm in the back of a work van, in the back of my work, in the parking lot. So, this is where, as frustrated and as pissed off as I get with this job, and I, everything that we've already talked about on this channel, this is where the advantages come into play, right? So, I can come into work and I can sit for six, seven, eight hours playing with a string, and nobody's going to say anything. It's totally fine. I run into a situation like this and I can sleep in the van. Um, this is not something that's allowed to every single employee. Um, this is where I do still have some of my perks and benefits where, you know, this is offered to me and not really anybody else. So, I don't know. I'm frustrated, I'm exhausted. Uh, this is gear fail number four. And again, not because Dutchware's product is bad. It's my mistake, you know, stepping on it, trying to set up in the dark. And then real quick, and I'll show you guys how it works later, but I did get another package. Uh, so, you know, I talked about, um, getting a windscreen for the camp stove. So I did get a little stove windscreen. This is from Red Camp. So this is, sorry, this light in the thing is pretty bright. Um, but it's from Red Camp. And uh, basically, it's just metal plates that kind of open up and I can fold it, make it a circle, whatever. Um, so yeah, it's all inside of here. It's compact, uh, it's actually super, super light. I forgot how many ounces exactly this was, uh, but it's really not a lot. Um, so having the windscreen is gonna protect that flame underneath while I'm trying to boil water or cook food and uh, preserve the life of the, the propane. So uh, when I, you know, I've already opened it, I've checked it out and uh, just simple, you know, uh, it does come in 8, 9, 10, or 12 of the little plates. So I got the 12, so it not only will fit around my current stove, but if I ever buy like a dual stove and things like that, you know, I have uh, a bigger version. So next time I cook and I set this up, I'll be sure to do a video on this so you guys can see exactly what this is. Uh, but pretty lightweight um, and compact, so this is definitely going to help. Welcome to day 41. Uh, it is about 11.15. <sighs> I'm exhausted. Um, I only got about two hours of sleep by the time I was done kind of putzing around in the van. Uh, woke up a little bit after eight. Uh, had to use the bathroom. And uh, so I went into work, used the bathroom, tried playing around with that whoopee sling. Uh, ended up making it 10 times worse, ended up breaking it. Um, so I'm down a whoopee sling. Uh, so what I am hoping is that I can go one, one whoopee sling. For now, uh, it's not going to be ideal, but uh, it's going to have to work. Um, I made a turkey sandwich with bacon. It's almost like a... BLT type of type of thing, turkey turkey club kind of sandwich sorta. Um, just putzing around at work trying to deal with this uh, whoopee sling charging up 
some of my stuff a little bit more and uh, yeah so back in my typical location spot I really didn't want to come back to for a while um, but it is close and I need to take a nap um, I do know of another spot that my boss took me to last night and uh, pretty heavily wooded so I definitely do want to explore some of that um, not sure if I'll be able to make it today or maybe on my next day off um, but we may have another location for just you know some setups a little bit of privacy things like that so I'm gonna eat my sandwich uh, I really did not feel like cooking I'm just so tired um, eat my sandwich and I'm gonna take a little nap a couple hours and then uh, and then get to it so um, as you see behind me right there uh, yeah got some hammockers so this is what I'm talking about ever since I started doing this people and I'm not the first one to hammock here people come in hammock but um, I haven't really seen it in a long time and ever since I started doing this people are just showing up with hammocks all times of the day so it's kind of cool um, I did get word um, I missed the phone call yesterday because I was dealing with so much stuff I was working and uh, and then dealing with all the whoopee sling issue but um, I did get a call from the farmers market people and they finished my little pot holder that they're making for me so called them back left them a message today um, so I may end up having to just meet up with them Tuesday uh, to get my little item so I'm super excited about that can't wait uh, but yeah so that's kind of where we're at so a little after 11 and finally kind of going to bed um, so I don't know we'll see where I end up today but I do need to shower um, I need to get out of my work clothes because I've been in my work clothes now since yesterday and uh, yeah really need to take this contact out this contact is really bothering me this morning so I don't know see what happens but it's kind of where we're at a little update so uh, pretty crazy day pretty stressful um, super tiring you know last night's mishap with the gear uh, sleeping in a van uncomfortably but relatively warm and then uh, went back and just kind of set the hammock up took a little bit of a nap um, but yeah so I am in a new location uh, that I talked about yesterday I believe um, so I am kind of off the beaten path from where I was kind of deep in a forest preserve but I found this really cool opening so I'm kind of digging it so yeah um, got a new product you'll have to wait because I'm gonna do a product review on that and uh, <clears throat> yeah so pretty exciting um, didn't expect this but uh, we got that little whoosh, bam um, so yeah, I'm going to do a product review video on that while I'm getting everything set up. Um, pretty secluded relatively, uh, be able to take a shower in private, which is nice. Look at it. Like my own little, my own little area. Um, definitely some thorn bushes around, uh, but that's all right. Um, there is a trail right back here. So any passerbys probably be able to see me um there is a woman that just walked over here um not sure what she's doing uh hiking and taking pictures but uh yeah so not the most secluded but anyway um exhausted still uh i definitely do want to get camp set up for the night um i gotta work tomorrow morning so i'll have to be up early um get camp set up and then uh do this product review get some food in my stomach and kind of chill out and have a good have a good night so and I now have everything set up so I'll kind of walk you guys through so I found these two sticks at Hooker Lane uh, I was originally going to set up there and there's no trees where I can canopy 
the tarp um, I do not have trekking poles so I'm trying to use what is around me uh, so I still had them and uh, I brought them with so I've got a little canopy set up got the new IMI a bug net set up um, a framed out in the back canopied in the front bag bike cart all tucked away over there got my little setup whole little front opening over here and then over here see if we can do this without sun so then behind me over here I have the sea to summit shower so basically what I've done is I've thrown it over a branch used some paracord and ran it down to a stake where it's high enough that I can get under it now the string that comes with the sea to summit uh, pocket shower um, I tried to use that it seemed pretty flimsy so I did double uh, kind of tie it through those d-rings and as I was uh, raising it up uh, it did snap so the string is not very durable uh, so I did switch to paracord um, so I am actually going to get under this thing and try to take a shower uh, clean up really quick now this area has had several people walk through um, two people that looked about my age uh, kind of making comments as they were walking through so I don't know, may not be the best location, we're going to find out, um, I am going to stay here, so we're going to make it home, hopefully for the entire evening, um, my bathing suit, every time I put this thing on, it seems to get bigger and bigger, and fall further off my body, so, uh, I'm going to try to figure out how to set the camera up, and, uh, going to show you guys a little demonstration of the pocket shower, and, uh, Hopefully it works. So Body wash. Alright, so as a portable shower that hangs, pocket shower is pretty nice. Um, for what I wanted it for is a dual purpose um, item. It doesn't really work the way I wanted, but that's all right. Um, it holds water. I can take a hands-free shower, so it's good enough for me. Um, I do need to figure out another source of carrying water. Uh, obviously, if I'm on a through hike, I am going to be bringing some type of water filtration system. Um, did think about doing something like that and then just utilizing that as my water source uh, not necessarily something I really want to do so 
I don't know. We're gonna have to see. Gonna have to see. But, I feel clean. Um, I like this spot. I really like this spot, so I'm hoping this spot does not get blown. Um, <clears throat> really hoping this spot does not get blown because it's nice, it's quiet, it's secluded. Uh, I don't have people coming up to me asking me questions, at least not yet. Um, I have had some passerbys, uh, so we'll see what happens. Um, but it is, you know, it's nice. It's a little bit more remote, a little more private. Um, I was able to take a shower, not feel kind of weird. And uh, I'm kind of ducked off from this little area that I'm at. I'll kind of show you. So I am off a main trail. Um, people can definitely see me um, if they walk in here. Um, but that is also why I picked these two trees because it is a little bit more off um, compared to two of the trees I was going to set up on, which is apparently right in the pathway walking distance, you know, where I guess the path, you know, I don't know what I'm trying to say, the path of travel, I guess, I don't know, direction of travel. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm um, kind of glad I didn't set up there and I set up over here. So, we'll see what happens. We'll see if we make it through the night without nonsense. Um, I do got to work tomorrow morning, bright and early, so I will be up super, super early. But, I'm digging it. Definitely digging it. So, I'm going to make some food because I'm starving. And, uh, and then chill out in the hammock and relax. Um, I am out of permethrin, so at some point I am going to have to restock back up on that. Um, bug spray is still super, super important. Um, it's not as cold today. Uh, it did warm up quite a bit. So we'll see how it is at night, if it stays hot or not. I don't know. Welcome to day 42. So... Uh, new location was good, um, it's peaceful, it's quiet, um, pretty much got a good night's sleep, I do kind of toss and turn in new locations, um, but, uh, for the most part pretty good, um, it was super cold out, the fleece sleeping bag, um, I had that, and then the blanket that I have, I kind of use as a pillow behind me. Um, and I think part of the reason I kept waking up was because I was seriously pretty cold. Um, so I ended up having to take the blanket and uh, using that too. So inside the sleeping bag, blanket on top of me, um, and then kind of using my hoodie is like a pillow uh, once I put the blanket on which was really only for like the last two hours of uh, sleeping um, it's definitely a lot a lot warmer and way more comfortable so it's getting cold um, I had to put my socks on my toes were freezing because uh, I generally try to sleep um, with bare feet just to give my feet you know the ability to breathe and all of that but uh, I think that time is coming where um, I'm not gonna be able to do bare feet it's definitely pretty cold at night so we're getting down into like 50 degree weather at night um, so I'm totally away from the lake a little bit more in the city um, so it's way warmer over here than it than it is by the lake, which is great. But but yeah, um, today, based off tracking information, we should have some pretty killer products today. So I am really really excited. Um, so we're definitely going to do some videos today. Super, super, super excited about what's coming. So I'm praying to God that the mail system, um, UPS, USPS, I'm praying to God that they're on time. All right, well, the morning did start off good. And 
all packed up and ready to head to work. I have a flat tire on my bike. I have no idea how. But I started to walk out of the spot that I was at to get back on the trail. And then uh, got on the trail and started riding. And oof, mosquitoes. Noticed that my ride was messed up. So, uh, yeah, I'm getting eaten. Eaten. Uh, yeah, I noticed my ride was messed up. And look down, and my back tire is flat. There's so many mosquitoes. Uh, so I don't know. I have no idea how that's going to get fixed because I don't have money. So that's going to be a pretty serious issue. And I got a lot to carry and more stuff that's coming today. So we might truly, truly be backpacking. Uh, and I have a special inner tube on this bike. So I gotta throw some garbage out. Uh, I have a special inner tube that only a couple of places carry. And I don't know if those places are open. And like I said, I don't have money. And I think this is like a $15 inner tube. So this is really gonna suck. So yeah, I don't know, it's gonna be a problem. But I gotta get to work. So <sighs> never fails, never fails. This is the thing I'm talking about too, where it's like, you know, people think, oh, well you're homeless, you're working, you can save tons of money. No, you can't. You're spending money like crazy. And the weird thing is, and people don't understand this, you actually spend more money out here than you would inside of wherever you're at. So, and then on top of it, I don't even make enough money. So we were going over, a buddy of mine and I were going over my pay and uh, how much I make a month compared to how much I'm spending a month on gear and food and, and all of that type of stuff. And uh, wh where can we save money? And the reality is we can't. So if I'm in my apartment, I make 1080 a month. I need 2100 to survive. So I'm already $1,200, $1,100 behind every paycheck um, every month. And being out here, obviously I don't have some of those expenses, but you know, this month I made $800. So I make 800 knowing that I make 1,080, I'm already $280 behind. I need that $280. So storage wasn't paid, cell phone wasn't paid, company website wasn't paid. Now this next check, which is going to be super light because I took days off, um, somehow has to, pay the storage, pay the cell phone, pay the company website, get food, and still be able to order a little bit of gear, have a little bit of money left over to carry me through the next two weeks. It's obviously not gonna happen. So we're gonna have serious decisions to make coming this paycheck. I'm gonna be broke and struggling, and we gotta make sure that what I have, I can make do with um, for the next two weeks. So, and now I have another expenditure. I have to replace another piece of gear. And that's a vital piece of gear. That's what gets me around. So, I don't know. This is a problem. So, <clears throat> I am sitting in my new Outdoor Vitals uh, hammock that I received yesterday. This thing is absolutely amazing. Super comfortable. And super big I love it I got out of here late last night and uh, set up the hammock first obviously and just sat down in it just because I wanted to see how it felt and as soon as I sat down it was absolutely amazing I could immediately tell it was so much more comfortable than the hammock I've been using um, so yeah <clears throat> so this video is just gonna be super short uh, I'll do a way more in-depth video later on today after work. 
Um, but quick little updates. New Outdoor Vitals hammock. I love it. Um, I got the Ayamaya underquilt, which I used last night. A world of difference using an underquilt. My entire backside was warm. Um, I did not freeze last night. It was just unbelievable. It was so nice. I um, got Outdoor Vitals um, pillow. So I got to sleep on a pillow last night, which was cool. Um, that thing's awesome. Um, what else? Uh, yeah, so I, I pretty much just set up the new hammock. I set up the Ayamaya bug net, the Ayamaya under quilt, and uh, pretty, pretty fast setup. So that was great. I needed that. Um, got out of work a little bit late. <coughs> Um, I volunteered to stay, get a little bit extra time. We had some staff that wasn't showing up, um, and uh, I needed to wait for some packages to arrive anyway. So I ended up sticking around. Um, another update, I've worked everything out with work, and uh, I'll clue you guys in on that later on as well. So, um, so yeah. So that is squared away. So I'll give you the details on that uh, later after work. I do have to work today from nine to five. Um, the bike is still not fixed. Um, let's see what we can do about trying to fix that inner tube so that I can get the bike mobile again. Um, I did have to basically rearrange uh, the backpack and stuff that I had inside the cart. Um, I had to take everything with me. So I needed to get a ride up here because <coughs> not everything fits inside this bag because I have some seriously bulky stuff. Um, and uh, needed to have water. So I'm still carrying that Coleman Camp shower as like a water bladder. Um, so yeah, and there's no handle. Um, so trying to carry that and walk is gonna be an issue. So last night I just got a ride up here. Um, I did come back to the lake um, just so I could be close enough to work because some of the more secluded areas that I'm going to are um, kind, of, kind of far out there. So I definitely need a bike. Uh, to get there but yeah um, so that's pretty much that uh, I've got my coffee ready tore down pretty quick this morning so um, as I'm upgrading the gear um, set up and tear down is definitely uh, becoming a lot smoother and a lot quicker now I got out here probably about 930 last night um, by the time I Kind of got all my extra stuff downstairs in the basement at work. Kind of reorganized and repacked the bag with what I need, what I don't need. Uh, like I took my shorts out, things like that. Uh, my bathing suit I took out. Um, so got out here about 9.30, so it was already dark. Uh, and then trying to set up some new gear. So it took me a little while. Um, I didn't actually sit down and finish just kind of relax until probably a little after 11:30, and uh, which I expected. Um, I ex actually expected way more time, so two hours, uh, just kind of bumbling around. Now I did get the Outdoor Vitals bug net. Um, I tried to play around with it last night, but <clears throat> it was just too much with too many new pieces of gear, trying to figure things out in the dark and whatever. So. Uh, I'll be setting up the Outdoor Vitals hammock today. I'm going to give you guys a little gear review on that and uh, kind of let you know how everything works and why I got, why I chose this company, why I chose these products, uh, why I chose to kind of upgrade my hammock and all that stuff. So, so yeah. Uh, so, you know, some good, exciting news. Got things squared away at work, so we're at a clean slate now. Um, so we can start over. Um, squared away some of the BS stuff. Uh, that I'm just not going to be dealing with. Um, squared away money, squared away hours, when I'm leaving, things like that. Um, 
and yeah new gear so I got a text message this morning um, from the post office so something else is being delivered I am expecting packages on Saturday so I am wondering if maybe something else I ordered um, is coming early um, got some more IMIA stuff coming next week and uh, in, in next month and, and all that so um, <clears throat> so yeah got some new gear uh, but just such an amazing difference last night in my sleep um, so we'll talk about all of that but I was warm and that was the main point warm and, and pretty relatively comfortable so we are at day 43 nearing the end um, I am just now actually getting a chance to film because I came to my spot um, down by the beach again because I'm still without a bike. So, I uh, found a store in town that does have my inner tubes. Um, gonna be between maybe seven to ten dollars. Um, but I gotta take the inner tube out and bring it to the store so we can kind of match it up because they have a couple different, couple different lengths. Um, so we gotta make sure we have the right one. So, it's gonna be sometime next week. Um, but anyway, so finally getting a chance to film because I get to my spot and I have another hammocker 10 feet away from me uh, who is then joined by some friends. Um, so I've been trying to actually do some product review videos for my outdoor vitals hammock and some other stuff that I got. Um, but I wanted to make sure that the video was going to come out really good. Um, and that's hard to do when you got people standing around 10 feet away talking and then we had cars in the parking lot playing music it was a nightmare so might have to do that tomorrow morning anyway so here's what I got going on so I'm at my spot I get set up um, today I received uh, a sea to summit package and um, a hammock gear package so uh, that is super super important um, so I'm really excited so let me kind of show you what I got going on behind me here I have my Outdoor Vitals hammock setup. So this is the only um, this is the only hammock that uh, Outdoor Vitals has. It's an ultralight hammock. Uh, it's a ripstop material. This thing is amazing. So I got to sleep in it last night, um, and I just been kind of laying around in it today, and it's phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. It's an 11 foot double. Um, there's so much room in this thing. Oh kind of what I have set up. So I've got the Outdoor Vitals hammock set up. I have my Sea to Summit gear sling set up. And then today I received a continuous ridge line from hammock gear. So this is, uh, I believe I ordered um, an Amsteel, an Amsteel continuous ridge line. So basically what this is, um, it is a ridge line for the hammock itself, okay? Now this clips onto the carabiners, and what that does, so I've been arguing with my buddy, um, but he was right, 100%. Uh, what that does is it actually gives the hammock a proper hang. Um, so as you can see, I've got a really nice hang in the hammock, so, uh, the Outdoor Vitals hammock does come with a ridge line. Uh, it's more of like a shock cord uh, type of um, ridge line. I wanted something just a little bit more durable, uh, a little stronger, and uh, you know, something that's going to last a little bit longer. Uh, nothing wrong with the shock cord. Shock cord is pretty good too. Um, I'm just a little picky. So I got that from Hammock Gear. Um, I also received the Dyneema stuff sack for um, my stakes. So it is very small, super compact, uh, but this is made of Dyneema. This is waterproof. It is extremely lightweight, pretty durable. Um, so I've stuck all of my stakes in here. Now I do want to get another one so I can kind of put maybe this stuff and maybe one more so I can put some hardware in there. Um, my if you guys remember when it was pouring out uh, my food bag I left out like an idiot kind of outside the tarp and open so the whole inside of my food bag got soaked um, that was what a week ago 
uh, pretty careless and this was the first time I knew that some of it got wet I didn't realize how bad it got wet um, so I started taking food out today just to kind of organize things um, and the whole bag on the inside was pretty soaked so I flipped it inside out um, washed it off and then uh, kind of hung it to dry um, I am using well let's see so then also with the outdoor vitals hammock it does come with whoopee slings which is pretty nice I like whoopee slings and then it does come with tree straps now the tree straps are smaller um, it's unfortunate for me personally because we have some pretty thick trees so there's actually only a couple of trees that I can set up on <clears throat> you know me with trees I'm always having bad luck so I will actually have to get some longer straps um, so they can fit the circumference of the trees that are around me um, but I did find a couple of trees that the hammock straps that the outdoor vitals hammock comes with actually fit so that's where I set up last night and where I'm setting up tonight um, then I used my grand trunk uh, suspension system to hang my bag so that worked out pretty nice um, the other thing is I got the Outdoor Vitals bug net. Now what this is, is this is basically a blanket style bug net. So what this will do, this I'll pull this all the way over, bring it up to this point, and then there's a drawstring on the inside that you pull in order to cinch it. So it's going to take a little bit of getting used to um, doing that because I am used to the more traditional bug nets. However, this thing is super lightweight. It is compact, uh, waterproofing on the edges as well as waterproofing on the bottom. Uh, what's great about the bottom too, and I've been kind of playing around with it where I can actually flip the bug net around completely. So it's a darker material on the bottom and then um, more see-through, kind of that no see -um, um on the top and the sides. So if I want a little bit more privacy, I can kind of flip that bug net over and kind of have that darker uh, waterproofing side um, kind of above me. I can do it halfway, all the way, whatever. Um, their pillow, this is how small this thing is. It is super compact. Um, it takes about two and a half breaths to blow up. Um, I slept on this thing last night and I, I can't even tell you how amazing it felt to sleep on an actual pillow instead of trying to stuff stuff behind me. Um, that compressible blanket that I've been using as a pillow, which is not bad, it's just obviously, you know, it's not the best. Uh, but this thing is pretty compact, super, super lightweight. Uh, so all of this stuff fits right inside of um, the stuff sack that the Outdoor Vitals hammock comes in. Now I'm going to sit in this hammock, I'm going to show you guys uh, the reason why I really wanted to get a way better hammock and one of the reasons I picked Outdoor Vitals um, over a lot of the other companies. Now there are great hammocks from a lot of other companies. Um, <coughs> my buddy's got some hammocks from different companies that are phenomenal, uh, but I really liked Outdoor Vitals. I like some of the gear that they had to offer, some of the cool technology that they had. So to show you guys so look how wide that is just behind me compared to the other hammock that you guys have seen me in that equip hammock from Walmart Let me try to turn this around so you guys can see can see kind of how wide how wide this hammock is um, this thing is super big so this is an 11 foot double hammock what else do I have going on um, so I did get my um, like I told you guys my sea to summit package came so let me kind of come around here <clears throat> so I got my titanium spoon uh, now I told you guys I picked up that spoon from Walmart um, that long spoon um, it is kind of a harder plastic but it is still bendable um, so I picked up a Sea to Summit. This is the Alpha Spoon. Comes with its own little mini tiny carabiner. This is made of titanium. Uh, super, super strong. Uh, it's ridiculously light. 
And then the other thing I got from them was the uh, the fleece reactor uh, liner. Now the liner is meant to go inside of a sleeping bag. Um, one, it keeps the sleeping bag clean. Two, kind of adds a little bit more warmth. So with this liner inside of a sleeping bag, you can get up to another 32 degrees warmth. See to Summit Thermalite Reactor Fleece Liner. Now this thing is way more compact. I know in the video right now it looks gigantic, but it's really not. Um, if I can, probably up to the water bottle. Let's do this. So here's my water bottle, and here is the Sea to Summit. So you guys can kind of see kind of a, a ratio in size. Um, this thing is ridiculously lightweight as well, so this is extremely important because you know I'm trying to get that pack weight down, and especially now because I'm walking. And as I said, I did take all of the food out, so I'll kind of give you guys a sneak peek on kind of what I eat, what I have going on. Uh, this is all my coffee and, and whatever, so you guys have taken a trip to Walmart with me, so you're kind of familiar with that. Um, tonight for dinner, I am eating the Backpackers Pantry Kathmandu Curry. This one I've kind of been saving for just a super chill night. Um, I've been really excited to try this one. I almost ate it the first day I got it, but I really wanted to kind of save it. So uh, that's what I'm eating for dinner tonight. Um, so I did get the Red Camp windshield. And uh, basically I told you guys, so these are um, aluminum plates. And uh, what this is going to do is <clears throat> it's going to go around my cooking stove so that it will block the wind. Now it's about nine and a half inches tall, which is perfect. Um, I did get the 12 plate system so that it will not only go around my current cooking apparatus, but if I happen to get one of those... Um, you know, kind of rectangle stove tops uh, that you see in the camping places. Um, it'll fit around that as well. So this is really what it looks like. And it's just aluminum platings. So yeah, and then down here I have, so this is a little stuff sack from Outdoor Vitals. You can kind of see the entire hammock uh, fits right inside of there. Um, it's really nice. I can literally just stuff it, that, you know, hence stuff sack. I can literally just stuff the hammock in there. Uh, the straps and the whoopee slings go in there. Um, the continuous ridge line will stay on my hammock from this point. So every time I set this up, it's automatically there. I don't have to be playing around with that. Um, and then I put the uh, Sea to Summit um, gear sling in with the stuff sack as well as my Outdoor Vitals pillow. Uh, and that all fits inside of the stuff sack with a little bit of room to spare. Uh, so yes, Outdoor Vitals, thank you so much. This has been amazingly helpful. Um, again, awesome gear for a through hike or whatever else, but I'm also homeless. And this is phenomenal stuff. So. I have no issue living in it. Um, so work, let's talk about that real quick. I'm gonna explain this very, very quick. So basically here's what happened. So we know that I've not been paid the right way for essentially the last year. Uh, we know I've been putting up with a lot of bullshit. <coughs> so here's what's going on. So basically I worked over a thousand hours of overtime. Uh, that total out to be, uh, with all that time, the overtime, the regular time, whatever. Total out to be over fifteen thousand dollars. Okay. Now, what we then did is we calculated out the dollar amount that I was paid already, um, subtracted that, so that was about ten thousand, uh, and then what was left over, essentially about five thousand. Um, the loan that I borrowed from my boss, we separated that as a totally separate entity, um, so that's about eighteen hundred. Took that away. So essentially, bottom line, um, it's about $3,000. So with uh, all the taxes and everything that's gonna end up coming out of that, uh, we'll see what I end up with. Um, but I got that taken care of. Um, 
so it's fair I'm happy with it it's okay it is what it is uh, it's just I've always been bothered about being paid straight time in cash because I'm not stupid I know there's still more money and as we see it's three thousand um, dollars but essentially it worked out where it's about three hundred to four hundred dollars per month that extra that I would have ended up getting that three or four hundred dollars per month additional to my pay could have avoided an eviction um, so you know it could have avoided a lot of stuff I would probably not be in this position that I'm in right now um, the other thing I got a dollar raise so I make eleven dollars an hour now instead of ten um, shot for two dollars more didn't get it got a dollar so uh, it's fine um, happy with that um, any hours that I work, everything's going on my paycheck now, including overtime. There's no more of this cash bullshit. There's no more of any of that. Everything's done the right way. Uh, we talked about my schedule. We talked about hours. Um, if staff doesn't show up, that's not my problem. Um, ask me, and if I can stay, I will. If I can't, if I have stuff to do, if I got company things to do, whatever it may be, if I cannot stay, I'm not staying. Um, don't just expect or require me to stay. Because I'm not doing that. It's not my. It's not my fault. I'm not the owner. I don't run the company. I'm not a manager. Um, but if I can stay, I'm more than happy to stay. Get that little bit of extra hours and help the team out. So uh, clean slate. I'm happy with the outcome. Um, so yeah. So that's one big giant stress that's now completely gone, and uh, we'll start over. So fresh attitude and. Uh, Everything should be great. So, it's my little, <clears throat> little mess I got going on.